Now, first we'll talk about arterial system, development of arterial system. That should be studied under two headings, development of arterial system, right? Now, development of arterial system should be discussed under two headings. Number one, the arterial system developing from the dangerous word, pharyngeal arches, right? I will explain what is that, don't worry. So, part of the arterial system will develop from pharyngeal, pharyngeal arches. Right, in the pharyngeal arches there are special aortic arches, we will talk about that and development of vascular system in rest of the body, rest of body, I will divide into two, right, again then we are going to talk about arterial system, right. So, let me explain, right, anyone, Anu you can help me, so we have Anu here. And let's imagine she is a small embryo, right? It depends on uh, your wild imagination. And we are going to see how she is going to develop arterial system in her, right? In the embryo, what really happens? I'm not going to explain the cardiac uh, formation, right? I'm just going to the arterial system. Now, what really happens that in the embryo, right? In this region development inside, there is pharynx. Pharynx, is that right? Now, what really happens? that mesoderm on the side of the pharynx, right? Suppose there is an ectoderm here, right? And there is a mesoderm here, right? And there is an endodermal tube which is her GIT, is that right? And here in the upper part this is pharynx. What happens? The mesoderm which is around the pharynx, it make proliferate, proliferation. And when mesoderm proliferation too much around the pharynx, and it, this proliferated mass of mesoderm grows forward and downward. And this mass which is moving forward and downward, this is called pharyngeal arch. What is it called? Pharyngeal arch. Previously they were called also branchial arches because uh, in the human embryo they look, they look like initially as these are bran branchial system developing which originally develops in fish and makes the gills, but because in humans there is no gill formation, so rather than calling them branchial arches, it is more appropriate to call them pharyngeal arches. So what are pharyngeal arches? That around the pharynx, there is inside, this is the pharynx, right? If this is my pharynx, around the pharynx, there is, what is that? Mesoderm, is that right? Now, this mesoderm proliferate and move like forward, from here also forward. These are called pharyngeal arches. Is that right? And multiple pharyngeal arches develop bilaterally. Is that right? Multiple pharyngeal arches develop bilaterally. Now, if it is a mass of, what is this? It's a mass of mesoderm. Is that right? A rod of mesoderm, you can say on, from both sides, blocks of mesoderm coming. Of course, inside they are having endoderm and outside they are having? Inside they are having endoderm, outside they should have ectoderm, not exoderm, right? Ectoderm, right? So, what we can say, what is pharyngeal arch? Pharyngeal arch is a proliferated solid mass of mesoderm which grows, yes, anterolateral to the pharynx and moves forward and downward as paired structures. As paired structures, the right and left structures, and the multiple of them. Let's suppose there's first pharyngeal arch, then second pharyngeal arch, third pharyngeal arch, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Is that right? Now, every pharyngeal arch, when it is coming like this, has its own nerve and has its own arterial supply. Every pharyngeal arch is having its own nerve and having its own, what? Arterial supply, right? Right now, we will not concentrate on that, but again, I will repeat. Every pharyngeal arch is having its own nerve, specific nerve, specific arterial, arterial branch and a specific muscle that's associated with it and some connect, more connective tissue like cartilage or bone. I will not go into detail of development of derivatives of pharyngeal arches. For a while I just want you to understand what are pharyngeal arches, are you clear what they are and where they are exactly developing and you understand they are like rods coming here and here and here and here, right? Now, what happens? 
that actually on the back of her body, right, there are dorsal aorta developing, right. Let me draw it here, right. So let's suppose here you are, right, this is your pharynx, is that right? And here is pharyngeal arch moving forward, you are getting it and from here also it is moving forward, you are understanding me? Right, that's good. If you understand, I believe all other people understand. Right. Now, this is one pharyngeal arch, this is another pharyngeal arch. Now, what happens uh, below, right, in the neck region, heart is developing, heart is developing, right? And you know, in the development of the heart, there is arterial side and venous side. On the arterial side, there is, there is what, truncus? Truncus? Arteriosis is very good. So what really happens that most distal part of in the development of the heart, suppose heart is developing here, this is truncus arteriosis. Now in truncus arteriosis, the most distal part is called pharyngeal aortic sac. What is this called? Aortic sac. Is that right? So heart is developing here. And there is truncus arteriosus. And most distal part of truncus arteriosus is what? Yes, please? Aortic. Aortic sac, right? Now, on the back, on the back, here are dorsal aorta. What are these? Development of dorsal aorta. There are two dorsal aorta. Of course, they are on the dorsal side. Is that right? Now, it means that if a dorsal aorta, I can show here. That these are the dorsal aorta. And here also, this is dorsal aorta. Am I clear? Any problem in understanding this? That what we can say that you can come here. Look, what, what we are having that dorsal aorta is going on the back in this region and on back on this region. These are two dorsal aorta. And what is here this? Truncus arteriosus and above that what is there? Aortic sac. Now you have, what are these things again repeat rapidly. Dorsal aorta and what is this? Aortic sac and from here what are these coming? Pharyngeal arches. Then what happens? From aortic sac vessels sprout out. You understand the process of angiogenesis. From aortic sac which is the most distal part of? You have to help me. Truncus arteriosus, right? From aortic sac blood vessel infiltrate into branchial arch and go back and fuse with what? Dorsal aorta. Now what will happen in her body? What is happening? That as pharyngeal arches are developing, right? Here in the front, what is the structure? Aortic sac. Behind what are the channels? Dorsal aorta. And from here, from the sac, vessels sprout out and go into which structure? Pharyngeal arch. First pharyngeal arch, second pharyngeal arch, third pharyngeal arch, fourth pharyngeal arch, fifth pharyngeal arch and its blood vessel actually either does not develop or regresses very rapidly. So I will talk about sixth pharyngeal arch. Now every arch is having its own artery connecting a paired artery, one on the left side, one on the right side, extending from ventrally connected with aortic sac and dorsally connected with dorsal aorta. Is that right? Right, and these vessels which are going like this as a paired structure, they are called aortic arches. What are they called? Aortic arches, pharyngeal aortic arches. Now what really happens? That once these uh, pharyngeal arches have been developed and every arch is having the artery, right? If I draw it here, how this structure will look? Dorsal aorta, dorsal aorta, is that right? What is this? Yes, sac and from here these are the and now these arches are called aortic arches. Aortic arches are the part of the pharyngeal arches. Is that right? We can say there is one, second, third, fourth, right? Fifth develop and either it does not develop or when it develops it undergoes regression and then there is what is this? Sixth. 
Any problem in understanding this? Anyone is confused. None of you is confused. 